Are you ready? I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we're going to do the in-depth review, as promised, for the Edicubic Cobra 3 combo. If you didn't already see the unboxing video, please see the link in the description below. We did a basic unboxing and the general setup for the machine, so be sure to go and check that video out. Sit back and enjoy. We'll dive right in. After some time now, I think it's a little over four weeks ago since we did that unboxing, we have had time to play with the machine, put it through some more testing, liaise with any cubic regarding some questions that we were asked by you guys. So we will do our utmost to answer everything that was brought up in the previous video. The build volume for this machine is 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters by 260 millimeters high. Maximum print speed is 600 millimeters a second. As we'll say with all machines, that is the maximum print speed that the machine is capable of. However, we don't recommend that you subject the machine to that sort of speed for prolonged periods of time. One, you'll get poor quality prints. Two, you're gonna wear components relatively quickly. I mean, ultimately, that sort of speed is literally for a quick one-off prototype. The printer is equipped with an all-metal hot end. It also comes with hardened steel extruder gears. The hot end is capable of 300 degrees C maximum temperature, and the build plate is capable of heating to 110 degrees, which is absolutely fine for more exotic filaments like ABS and ASA. The ACE unit has a built-in filament dryer. Now you can control this via the actual user interface on the printer. Maximum temperature for drying your filament is 55 degrees C. If you've got damp filament, the ACE unit's quite capable of drying the filament prior to printing and while printing. A lot of you wanna know what is the multicolor function like from this machine? We have found it to have quite satisfactory results printer of this price point. We've printed numerous things that will all be shown in close-ups in the video but overall the machine does what it's supposed to do regarding some of the tests that we've done the machine will take standard plastic spools take spools down to half a kilogram and it will take cardboard spools as well which can be problematic in some of the other types of color changing units obviously each filament is fed to the machine via its own PTFE Bolden tube which then goes to the extruder and it basically what the ACE unit does is it retracts and feeds in the filament to the extruder on color changing. So that's the reason for the for the group of PTFE tubing. I mean, overall, it's not a big thing at all by any means. The, the unit does take up quite a bit of space, so you need to make sure that you've got adequate room to house the, the setup. Overall, it works very well. The design and build quality. We touched on this a little bit in the previous video. The overall build and the quality of the machine is really very good i mean you've got a solid construction it's an all metal base you've got dual lead screws at the back of the machine that are driven via one step motor connected by a belt everything runs on the x-axis with nylon wheels the bed is on a like a veed steel wheel so you'll get pretty much little to no wear on, on the wheels that are on the bed. Everything is pretty much tweakable via eccentric nuts to make sure that you've got the actual machine set nice and there's no excessive play anywhere. One of the things that I found a little bit fiddly was the latch on the actual ACE unit. It feels like it's opened and then when you try and lift the lid it isn't actually fully opened and you have to quite force it across until you physically hear it click before you can actually lift the lid to get into the ACE unit. So that was a little bit of a negative, but that could just be me being overly picky. As with most multi-material units, you cannot print TPU or TPE from the ACE unit. Inside the unit itself, there is an extruder motor. The extruder motor will pick up the filament and then try and push the filament through the Bowden tube to the extruder on the printer. Flexible filaments do not like it. They're too soft. They don't push down the tube correctly. So if you're going to print with TPU or TPE, then you have to use the external spool holder, print direct from, from that 
into the extruder. If you do that method, the machine is quite capable of printing with TPU and TPE, not an issue at all. So Anycubic claim that you can link up to two ACE units, which is gonna give you a total color changing capability of eight colors. On the back of the ACE unit, you've got another four pin socket where you can daisy chain the units together so you'll turn four into eight this will be an added upgrade that you can purchase individually on its own we had quite in-depth conversations with any cubic over some concerns that we had some questions that we wanted answered and the, the first question that was asked in the in the previous video was will this machine be open source clipper Anycubic have confirmed that the machine will be fully open sourced and will run Clipper. The other thing that we were asked is what was the slicing software. So we used initially Anycubic slicer. Overall, we weren't overly impressed with the slicing software compared to other slicers. It was quite limited in what it allowed you to do and tweaks that you could make and everything else. Since then, I actually had a play around with Orca and I managed to successfully create a profile in Orca Slicer for this machine that was capable of colour change. And I mean, the donut is proof. This was printed in an Orca Slicer. No doubt we'll be able to transition that across to Prusa Slicer and any other slicers that you prefer to use with multicolour printing. The official profiles will be coming soon. And no doubt with Orca being open source, the devs for Orca once they get their hands on this machine, we'll probably create their own profile. So this will be an added option straight off the bat in, in Orca. The machine also has a couple of other features. It has clog detection. So basically, if the machine notices that there's a clog or it's failing to pick up filament when it's been swapped out for whatever reason, the machine will pause and it will let you know that there's a clog. And it will keep the bed heated so you can address the problem, switch it out, press resume, and your print will carry on so you've not got a failed print basically inside the actual extruder there's a sensor that picks up when the filament is actually engaged in the extruder gears so if it doesn't make it that far it'll let you know the machine also has a handy feature say for instance you were printing long batches constantly the same one color you could load the ace unit up with four spools the same filament the machine would then use every last bit from each spool before automatically switching to the next slot and continuing printing. So you're going to end up with no part spools that are going to get wasted and thrown away because it will run it out, it'll switch it over and then feed in the new filament for a continuous print, which is another nice feature. The other thing that we did trial with the machine was adding a standard webcam to the USB socket. In the standard slicer, the, the webcam instantly showed up and displayed without any tweaking so going forward again this will allow you once it's been you know open source for clipper remote accessing from mainsail fluid whatever you choose to use pros and cons to the machine as any of you that are familiar with multi-material printing no matter what you do if you're printing a model that has multiple filament changes, the machines generate waste. There's no getting around it. Other manufacturers have the same issues with their machines. This is no exception. You can, however, adjust the amount that you waste. We've tried numerous tests on this machine. This machine printed faultlessly with the purge tower removed, disabled. This was printed with no purge tower. This was printed with no purge tower and the little chameleon was also printed with no purge tower so it shows that the, the actual purges from the extruder is more than adequate so by doubling up on that and printing a purge tower as well it's just a waste and it adds to your print time so we just disable that in the slicer use the normal purging options through the extruder and we didn't have any issues with that at all i will say that orca slicer's profile for purges was probably a little bit better than any cubic's own slicer. We did notice with some colours that we tried in any cubic, there was a little bit of colour bleed, and that was purely down to the purge cycles not being long enough, and it wasn't purging enough material through from, say, a black to white, for instance. So you were getting like a, a dirty white line at the beginning of some of the prints. Orca 
didn't have that problem. Orca Slicer has the calculations for a range of colours that seem to be pretty much optimal for multi-material printing without any cross-contamination. So that's another thing to note. So overall, for the price point for this machine, I mean, it's currently on a pre-order on our website for £436.93. Now, for something of this spec, this size, it's a steal. You won't get anything else for that price point that's capable of producing what this machine can produce. And with the prospects of it being open source to Clipper, it's going to make it a very highly tunable machine going forward. So, yeah, it's definitely worth the consideration if you're in the market for multi-material printing. And I can't really add much more to it than that. The competitor's price for a similar spec machine, you're going to be paying quite a lot more money. As I said, going forward, with the prospect of it being unlocked and open source, so you will be able to get the absolute best from this machine moving forward, just by making a few simple tweaks like you know, your flow calibrations and that type of thing. So the the actual overall first results without anything other than a different slicer, you know, the results are more than acceptable. It does what it says it can do very well. So overall, a very well thought out, very well specced machine for the price point. As I say, this is on pre-order currently on our website. So be sure to check out the link in the description below. Please do not forget to like subscribe and share and do you, if should you have any questions regarding this machine then please drop them in the comments below and we will answer you as soon as possible i hope you've enjoyed this video and we will see you on the next one thank you very much for watching bye bye for now as always we aim to have the most competitive 3d printer prices in the uk if you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream uk retailer for less please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price also if you're watching from outside the uk Check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.